deja vu. Liu Bei signed in his mind. After taking refuge in Liu Biao's place, Liu Bei was once again used as a shield and was sent to the north of Jin Province by Liu Biao to harass Cao Cao. This was so similar to the previous situation where Liu Bei just joined Tao Qian. Cao Cao was busy eradicating Yuan Shao's remnant forces in the north and didn't have the time to deal with Liu Bei himself, so he sent Xia Houdun, Yu Jing, and Li Dian to fight against Liu Bei. The two armies confronted each other at Bo Wang. Would Liu Bei, who had been repeatedly defeated, lose this battle again? Hello, everyone. Welcome to Historically Accurate. When a person hits rock bottom, he or she always eagerly hopes that someone will help. Liu Bei was no exception. After being chased all the way to Jin Province by Cao Cao, Liu Bei finally settled down under the protection of Liu Biao. However, Liu Biao only temporarily solved Liu Bei's survival problem, and his help was offered in exchange for Liu Bei stationing in Xinye to resist Cao Cao. To become more powerful, Liu Bei needed the help of more capable people. Fortunately, Liu Bei's special skill was that he could quickly get the support of local reputable families and capable people wherever he went. Liu Bei rapidly established good relationships with the local notables. However, this also made Liu Biao start to secretly guard against Liu Bei. Soon after, Liu Biao sent Liu Bei to the north to attack Cao Cao. So, the scene at the beginning happened. But this time, after repeated military defeats, Liu Bei finally accumulated enough experience to upgrade, and finally learned to fight. Liu Bei sent his troops to attack Xia Houdun at Bo Wang Slope, and then pretended to be defeated and retreated. Xia Houdun, who underestimated the enemy, led his army to pursue. As a result, he was caught in Liu Bei's ambush and was utterly defeated. This was Liu Bei's first victory against Cao Cao's forces. This also showed that Liu Bei's learning ability was pretty strong. However, in the novel Romance of the Three Kingdoms, this battle became the first battle commanded by strategist Zhuge Liang after he joined Liu Bei's forces. The young Zhuge Liang set up an ambush and commanded Guan Yu, Zhang Fei, and Zhao Yun to defeat Xia Houdun with fire. Writing the story this way, of course, was to make Zhuge Liang look more resourceful, and could also indirectly show the great improvement of Liu Bei's overall strength after he recruited Zhuge Liang. Unfortunately, this is just a story in the novel. In fact, Liu Bei's battle at Bo Wang took place in 202 AD, while Zhuge Liang only joined Liu Bei's forces in 207 AD. After the Battle of Bo Wang, Liu Bei had several years of relatively stable life in Jin Province. On one occasion, Liu Bei started crying after he came back to his seat from the washroom. Liu Biao was surprised and asked him what happened. Liu Bei said, I used to fight on horseback all the time. However, I have been living a stable life for so many years and my thighs have become fat and flabby. I can see clearly that I am getting old, but I still haven't achieved my goal yet. Therefore, I'm getting sad. When I read this story, I immediately got up and weighed myself and started crying as well. Just kidding. In fact, this is what I admire a lot about Liu Bei. Many people will gradually accept their status quo when they reach a certain age, and there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. But Liu Bei was still stubbornly sticking to his goal at the age of 47 and cried over the fact that he hadn't reached his goal yet. This firm belief was also the key to his success in the end. Although Liu Bei didn't fight many wars in recent years and gained some weight, he didn't waste his time. He gave full play to his strength and made friends with many famous and powerful people in Jin province. Previously, Liu Bei didn't have any good strategists in his forces. This time, he not only recruited Xu Shu, but also got to know Zhuge Liang on Xu Shu's recommendation. 
Liu Bei made three trips to Zhuge Liang's place before he was able to see Zhuge Liang. Zhuge Liang was moved by Liu Bei's sincerity and was convinced to join Liu Bei's forces. This is a famous story of three visits to the thatched cottage. In Romance of the Three Kingdoms, after Zhuge Liang joined Liu Bei's forces, he not only commanded the Battle of Bo Wang, but also commanded Liu Bei's army to defeat Cao Cao's army again in Xinye. Of course, the battle in Xinye was not found in historical records either. Zhuge Liang mainly helped Liu Bei with strategies instead of military affairs. Zhuge Liang showed the way forward for the vulnerable Liu Bei, which was to ally with Sun Quan against Cao Cao. Step 1, Liu Bei needed to establish a foothold. Step 2, he needed to first take Jin province and then take Yi province. And the next step was to use these two provinces as the base to compete with Cao Cao and Sun Quan. In fact, Liu Bei did follow this course of action afterwards and also achieved success. In addition to Zhuge Liang, Liu Bei also recruited many other local capable people while he was managing Jin province for about 10 years. Liu Bei's talent pool had grown rapidly. It can be said that Jin province was Liu Bei's blessed place. Liu Biao became seriously ill soon after Zhuge Liang joined Liu Bei. Before he passed away, Liu Biao planned to entrust Jin province to Liu Bei. I bet Liu Bei must have said deja vu when he heard the news. It was so similar to Tao Qian previously entrusting Xu province to Liu Bei. However, Liu Bei firmly declined this opportunity because he believed that it would be unjust if he replaced Liu Biao's son to take over Jin province. In my opinion, in addition to feeling unjust to take over Jin province, Liu Bei was quite aware of the situation at that time. He didn't have a strong army of his own, while a large part of Jin province army was in the hands of Cai Mao and Zhang Yun, who supported Liu Biao's second son, Liu Cong, instead of Liu Bei. In this situation, even if Liu Bei took over Jin province, he would be quickly defeated, just as what happened in Xu province. Soon after Liu Biao passed away, Cao Cao, who had unified the north, led his army to attack Jin province. Liu Cong, who had already taken over Jin province at that time, immediately surrendered to Cao Cao. Liu Bei could only withdraw from Jin province in a hurry. When passing by Xiangyang, Zhuge Liang suggested Liu Bei to raid Liu Cong so that he could occupy Xiangyang to resist Cao Cao. However, Liu Bei rejected this suggestion for the same reason he had previously given for refusing to take over Jin province. During Liu Bei's retreat, Liu Cong's former subordinates and a large number of people voluntarily followed Liu Bei to evacuate. This was because Cao Cao had previously massacred all the residents in a few cities he conquered, while Liu Bei was known for his benevolence and righteousness. Following Liu Bei was better than being killed by Cao Cao even if they had to leave their hometown. Liu Bei asked Guan Yu to lead the navy to Jiangling first and wait for him to join them. He himself led the infantry to cover the retreat and could only move just over 5 kilometers a day with the people. Cao Cao was afraid that Liu Bei would occupy the fortified Jiangling city, so he ordered Cao Chun to lead a cavalry of 5,000 elite soldiers to chase after Liu Bei. Finally, they intercepted Liu Bei in Changban. Liu Bei's army and people were soon scattered by the attack, and his two daughters were also captured. Only dozens of people, including Liu Bei himself, Zhuge Liang, Zhang Fei, and Zhao Yun narrowly escaped. They ran into Guan Yu's fleet at Hanjin port and decided to go to Xiakou together. Xiakou was guarded by Liu Biao's eldest son, Liu Qi, and his over 10,000 soldiers. After arriving in Xiakou, Liu Bei immediately sent Zhuge Liang to form an alliance with Sun Quan and finally defeated Cao Cao at Red Cliffs at one blow by cooperating with the naval forces of Sun Quan's chief commander Zhou Yu. The Battle of Red Cliffs was the most important battle in the Three Kingdoms period. Cao Cao's defeat in this battle dashed his hope of a rapid unification of the country and gave Liu Bei and Sun Quan the opportunity to divide up the land in southern China, which eventually led to the formation of the Three Kingdoms. However, this battle was mainly commanded by Zhou Yu and Liu Bei's army only played a supporting role. 
After Cao Cao retreated to the north, Liu Bei recommended Liu Qi to become the governor of Jin province and quickly conquered the four commanderies in southern Jin province, Wuling, Changsha, Guiyang, and Lingling as his own territory. In addition, he also recruited two great generals, Huang Zhong and Wei Yan. Liu Qi soon died of illness and Liu Bei succeeded Liu Qi as the governor of Jin province. After that, Liu Bei ordered Guan Yu to help Zhou Yu conquer Jiangling. According to Zhuge Liang's strategy, Liu Bei's next step should be to attack Liu Zhang's Yi province in the west. However, Sun Quan also planned to conquer Yi province and had Zhou Yu prepare in Jiangling. Nine Commandery, where Jiangling was located, was the only route connecting Jin province and Yi province. If Liu Bei wanted to conquer the west, he had to occupy Nan Commandery first. At this time, Zhou Yu died of illness when he was only 36 years old. Liu Bei asked Sun Quan to lend him Nan Commandery so that he could prepare to attack Yi province. Considering the need to maintain the Sun Liu alliance and that lending Nan Commandery to Liu Bei would allow Liu Bei to help him protect against the threat posed by Cao Ren's army in Xiangyang in the north, Sun Quan agreed. By this point, Liu Bei, who was almost 50 years old, had finally acquired a territory with his own military strength for the first time after repeated failures. The territory was good enough to be used as the base for Liu Bei to fight for the control of ancient China. He had a much stronger army than before as well as a large number of military generals and advisors. He was ready for new challenges. We will stop here due to time limit. I will talk about how Liu Bei defeated his lifelong enemy Cao Cao and became the emperor in my next episode. If you have any thoughts and suggestions, please leave your comments below. If you like my video, please like, subscribe and turn on the notification bell. See you next time!